And we're back, and it's uh, Comp 213, uh, Web Interface Design, and we are um, Week 10, Lesson 10, and I believe it's Part 3. <clears throat> um, we can check that out. Again, if you're not sure where to get the uh, video lessons or where to get them from, um, you can certainly go to uh, Faculty Web. Uh, that's in Centennial College. Ca, and my first initial part of my last name. So they up hit YouTube, and underneath there you'll see that there's web interface design. Um, I've got um, lesson ten, part one, uh, part one and two, uh, kind of already done. Uh, had a little bit of difficulty when we got together last time. I'm sure if you guys were with me, but I fixed that up, um, so it works nicely now <clears throat> with what I was trying to do. The first part of this lesson was all about uh, responsive, making responsive design uh, navbar, which uh, we were able to accomplish in one of our uh, sections. So this lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking more about forms. Um, I'd like to direct you to uh, GitHub, my GitHub. And again, if you don't know where that is, you can certainly go back to that website. And uh, you can go to GitHub, the GitHub link, and it'll take you to uh, my repositories, and if you look under repositories, you can certainly see that there is um, a Comp 213 Lesson 10 Part 1, which is what I'm going to hit right now. If you go there, and you can download this lesson so you can be on the same page as me, as opposed to uh, trying to catch up um, if you don't have things uh, rocking and rolling. All right, so let's go back to that uh, part. I'm just going to bring that up. So I'm going to go to uh, Visual Studio. And I'm going to go to that uh, Comp213 Lesson 10 Part 1 and kind of bring that up again so we're all on the same page here. And I'm just, let's make this a little bit smaller. And let's run this thing to see what it looks like. So it looks like this. Let's take a look. All right, so right now we've got um, a bit of a forms example that I put together with this red line here, this red box. Um, and I've got my, uh, you know, my toolbar, which again does that whole... Uh, thing with uh, my our responsive toolbar we kind of built, right? That's we kind of built that in one of our sections. You can certainly watch the video for that. But that's what it does right now. It's kind of I've outlined the form. This is what the form would look like uh, based on a couple of, of things that I've put together. So let's see what those things are. And if you if I can direct you back to the PowerPoint presentations for a second, I'm gonna kill this. So remember, we're, the things we want to look at when we create forms are the out, outline tag. So this is the container tag, which is the form tag. Without the form tag, your elements can't do anything. You can't, you can actually, you can't uh, interact with the back end. So again, remember the two forms, so review. We've got the front end um, on the design side, which has all the forms, the controls, all that stuff. On the back end, we have the server side processing, which we don't take care of here in this class. Uh, but in order for the, the server-side stuff to take effect, you need to have um, a proper syntax inside your HTML. And that one of the things is you need to have this container tag, this form tag, uh, in there. Now, there's different kinds of input tags. And input tags, it might say input, but actually an input could also be a button. And this is an example of where we have a couple of input tags. We have our form. Here's our form container. And again, I got this from GitHub. So if you want to go on that GitHub link I just showed you, you can certainly grab it from there. But we have our form container. I just call this main form. That's just giving it an ID. I've got an action, right? Um, and there's also other things you can do. If, if I say, for example, um, you know, uh, you know, the what all the things I can do, right? For my for my form, I have an action, right? Where I'm going to, right? And if I look at IntelliSense, right? So all the things that a form can do, right? And if I scroll down, there's quite a few things that it uh, allows me to do. Some of them are form specific, right? And some of them are generic based on uh, the type of um, um, <clears throat> the container type. So there's our target, there's our role, style, title, translate, type of uh, action vocabulary, right? Now this is, it's important to understand what the form header does for us when we actually look at the form itself. So again, I would redirect you if I was going to look at this back to our W3 schools for as our, and I use this a lot again for our uh, documentation. Let's get some really good documentation up there. Um, and if you don't know what that is, so if I go, you know, example, if I, if I search for uh, form, so here's form, right? And I look at the form tag, this is the HTML form tag, it tells you uh, what it can do, right? 
So here's our definition. The form tag is used to create an HTML form for user input, and then it contains one or more of the following elements, an input, a text area, and so on. Those are the elements that it contains, right? A label and so on. We'll talk about some of these things and see what the differences are. Um, and then there's some attributes. For example, um, it tells you stuff that's not supported. It tells you some good things, things that work. One of the things to note is action. Action, uh, that's one of the attributes of a form, it specifies where to send the form data when the form is submitted. So you can actually specify an, an, uh, another page. Usually it's some kind of back-end page like PHP, um, uh, someplace that's just going to process the form data, right? So again, we don't do that. It could be PHP, it could be ASP.x, ASPX, it could be something else that grabs the form information. It could be nothing. It could be action with no, with no specifier. Um, you could see if the form should have autocomplete on or off. What's autocomplete? Who knows what that is? You guys should kind of know. It basically says when you start entering form information, it remembers, right? Um, the stuff that you've already done before, and it, um, it tries to autocomplete complete your form based on your previous input. This can be good and bad. Um, if you want to make sure that the auto autocomplete is off, let's say for example if you're doing a username and password, you don't want them to remember what the username and password is, because that could be a security breach, right? Like for example if John Smith enters his username, John Smith, and I go back to the same computer and start entering my username and I start typing something and I see John Smith come up, hmm, I got, I got a username. Now I can like, you know, try and enter some passwords to break, break the encryption. Uh, and get in. Um, especially if, they, if someone remembered their password, that would be really bad on a public machine. So that's autocomplete. You can choose on or off. Method is really important as well. And uh, the method for the form get or post um, has uh, different advantages and disadvantages. And again, from our perspective, we really don't care uh, at this point which one we use. We're not going to use any because we're not going to have any kind of form processing going on uh, for our method. Right, but we should definitely include something, whether it's form or for or from a, uh, just from a basic uh, styling perspective. And then, of course, we have uh, no validate if we don't want the form to validate when submitted. So no validation, um, we can turn the no validate on as well. This is for the form itself, not for each individual field of the form, right? And also our target, right? So if we display our response, do we want to display the response in a new window? Um, you know, we can actually target the uh, the form as it moves from um, uh, from when we when we do stuff again. We can move into another page. So let's try this out. So we have a couple of things, and I've got some piece of the form in there. I've got my main form. My action is nothing. It doesn't go anywhere right now. And my method again. You could choose our method being um, either a get or a post, right? And again, if there's also a couple of other methods that are new, there's also a delete and a put. Right, and depending on what which method we choose, um, we can choose. Um, it does different things in the back end. So let's use post as our method for now. And again, this is the le least secure method uh, of form. We we actually uh, form actually post information on our on our URL. But uh, and again, that's that's what this does. Our post method. And um, again, we notice there's a username. I've got a little bit of a um, of a um, some texture that says username. And I've created a password here. Um, and there's a couple things to note. My input is the next uh, thing we're looking at. Our input, if I go back to um, you know different things here, uh, one of the things they talk about, the main thing, is input. And if I look at input, what that does, um, again, it's the input text specifies an input field where the user can enter data, right? But again, the input field can also have certain attributes. Example, um, it can have things like alignment. Um, again, I wouldn't recommend this. Um, to use it, so you see how it says not supported in HTML5, alt text, and you know sometimes you want alt text, um, you know for any kind of images. Autocomplete, you can turn autocomplete on or off for an input type field. Again, um, it could be on for certain things and off for other things. Autofocus, so that it takes takes focus automatically uh, when you are coming in when you actually activate the form itself. When you go to the form, some field takes focus first. Focus means it gets the cursor. Right, the cursor goes there first. Right, if it is checked or unchecked, specifies the input element should be pre-selected when the page loads for a type of checkbox or radio. Because remember that type of the type of, of input form makes a big deal uh, in terms of how it's displayed. Um, if it's disabled, if the form is disabled, then you can't do anything with it. Or sorry, the input, the input. Um, 
and so on. There's a bunch of other ones. I'm not, I'm not going to skip the ones that don't really we're not going to use right now. Uh, max. Uh, here's one. Max specifies the maximum value for an input element. So, for example, what's my maximum value? A number. It could be either a number or date. This. That's why this is this API documentation is really useful, right? Because if you look through it. Um, you know, you could kind of go through and see, okay, what can I input, what can I use in my input field and what can I not use? If you try and do some stuff, try and uh, input certain things, it won't work. When you're making your form, it's really important to do this. Your name, um, specify the name of the input element. For example, if I want to name it something uh, so that screen readers can, can look at that as well, uh, we want to put a name or a title. Uh, we can use a pattern, a placeholder, uh, which is kind of uh, default text that uh, it's a short hint. Uh, that talks about what this thing is. So, for example, if I say enter your name, your uh, your username, that could be a placeholder text. If it's read only or not, so we can't enter anything in there. If you just want to display information, uh, we can do that as well. Um, if it's required, this is something new in HTML5. If you put required, that means you can't hit the submit button without the required field uh, being taken care of. Right? It won't allow you to to do stuff. The size. Um, again, it specifies the width in characters of an input element. You could certainly do that, so it could limit the number of characters. Let's say, for example, you only want 10 characters. Uh, you could limit that, so it won't, uh, especially if you want to do some validation. Um, you can also wrap an image behind it, so you can say, um, again, if, it's a, if the type is an image, uh, some kind of input is an image, you can specify the source. It's only uh, available for that. Um, I'm going to keep going down. Here are all the types, though. This is really, really important. Take a look. So I can have an input, but it can be a button, a checkbox, a color, a date, a date time, an email, and so on. There's all kinds of different kinds of inputs that you could specify. So we use input as a generic control element that we're going to put inside of our form container. So we have a form container, and inside there we have a bunch of inputs. Typically, that's how it's done. And again, we can have buttons. And the most common ones are buttons, um, text boxes that you can have input information. Uh, and so on, okay? And then the value, well, you can pre-specify a value for the input. So let's say, for example, you want to have a certain value that's kind of being def defaulted. So if the user doesn't enter something that you want a, specif uh, spec a specific value that can be over uh, overwrote, overridden, you can do that. And a width in pixels. I uh, don't recommend this width in pixels. You want to try and put your width, um, specify your width on the CSS side. Any kind of styling, again, we want to separate styling from HTML. Okay, we want to do that at all times. We want to keep those two elements separate because um, this way we can put our styling off in, in, a, in some kind of style sheet and we can modify that style sheet and it'll cascade down the entire website as opposed to some specific styles that are only page specific that will not be affected, uh, which is not the way we want to code in this modern age of HTML5 and CSS3. So that's the things we don't want to do. So a couple of things, one more thing I want to talk about. Uh, so that's that, that input's really, really important. Um, and again, it's uh, under the form elements. Text areas are bigger areas, so they contain things like a larger area where you can um, offer information, more information, right? So a text area usually um, allows us uh, to add uh, or to enter more information. So again, it defines a multi-line text input control, right? So if I want to add multiple uh, characters, almost like a little more than one information, and I want to skip to the next line and so on, it does hold an unlimited number of characters, right? And um, you can, I can specify how many columns and rows. Uh, I can also specify uh, through CSS the height and width properties. That's the way I wanted to do it, right? So again, there's a bunch of different elements. If you notice, just each of the controls themselves have a number of attributes that you should, um, you probably won't be able to remember. And that's why we use our uh, code hinting or uh, IntelliSense on the Microsoft side. Right. So again, you can specify placeholder information, you can specify if it's read-only or not, and so on. Sometimes we want read-only text areas or even text boxes to give input to the users. And we can, um, remember, we can style the text box to look like it's a label, like it's not something that you want to go into or look at. Okay, um, that's that one. And button we talked about, there's some interesting things for buttons as well. Again, if I say button, right? Um, the type of button. There's two ways to do this actually. If you notice, I can say my input type is button, or I can specify more of a uh, semantic HTML element button. You can actually call it button, and it would still work just as well within a form. Both ways are correct. Um, I've seen it done uh, both ways in many ways. Uh, these are all, there's a lot of different um, uh, options here as well. 
Um, you can certainly add a bunch of these attributes to your button um, control. For example, the value, what's the text value, um, the type. There's different types of buttons. There's a button, especially just a regular button. There's a reset button, and there's a submit button, right? So if you say submit, that's going to actually submit the form. And then there's different ways of styling uh, buttons. You can actually style each button separately. Okay, so buttons really, really important when we have buttons on a form, right? Um, <clears throat> and um, let's see what else. Label. I'm, I'm going to skip some of these other ones for now. Option, option, group, field set, and so on. Let's go to label for a second. Right, so label, what this does, again, it's a fairly new element in HTML5. And what this does, it's basically a label for an input element. And they're usually paired together. That's usually how it's done. Um, so it doesn't really render anything special. What it does, and there's a few attributes, um, you can choose, uh, there's a for attribute, a for attribute. So if you say for, and then it specifies which form element the label is bound to. You can specify this label is for my text box or whatever, my this particular text box. Or, and whatever the element ID is, you put it inside that for. Now, we'll, we'll talk about why you do that in a second. There's also the form. You can specify which form the label belongs to as well. Okay, so if I click for, this is one of the most confusing things for people to see. Here's an example of what it would look like for a form. So you have your label, and underneath that you have your input. So there's two different things. There's, there's the, what is it for? For is for mail. Here's the ID for the input box. So you have mail is what will be displayed, and then this is the, the, the um, input for this. Well, what happens is when you bind these things together, you only need one line break. And they treat those two things as one, almost like as if I don't have to wrap them up. And, and um, I don't have to put them on separate lines. They won't break, in other words, uh, in different ways. And again, there's like, support. If you notice, the, the support for browsers across the platforms, uh, there isn't any specific thing. And it's a neat thing from a styling perspective to have a label. So let's go back to our code for a second here. So I've got some input. I've got an input item. And I've got uh, some more inputs right here. And, and notice I also have some free-floating flo text. Well, I should probably put that free-floating text inside of a label. Uh, container. So let's do that. So let's just, um, you know, instead of uh, username and by itself, I'll just add in uh, label, right? And I'll put that, I'll just drag and drop this um, uh, username and I'll put that inside my label container. That's what it looks like now, right? And the same thing goes for passwords. I'm just going to re kind of, kind of copy this whole thing and put it here and then take this password piece and pass it into there. So there's my username and password uh, for my label. I'm just going to put the label on, a, on the input on a separate line for now, just to show you what it looks like. And then I have a couple of buttons. I have a uh, type. Uh, one of them is a button. I can certainly make this submit. That's probably what I want to do, submit the form, a type of submit. The other one is a type of reset, right, type of reset. So there's different lines that are going on here. And they're all inside these form elements. I'm going to break them out so you can see that there are separate lines here. So Again, here's my label and input, related input. I don't have a for in my label. And if I want to specify this label is for this particular um, input, which is a text control, right, that allows you to input text, I have to specify my ID. Well, let's not do that right now and see what happens when I run this form the way it is. So here's my form. And if you notice, I have my username up here. And down here, I have my text area, my text box. Right now, I haven't styled them at all, um, and they're very, very basic. Let's take a look at this. So again, username, form. But if I put a four element in, does it do anything? That's the question. So if I say four, and then equals to, right? And now I can choose. Take a look. It gives me IntelliSense gives me a choice to choose uh, predefined uh, uh, text boxes. Like for example, my username text box. I could choose username. Right. So now these two are bound together. Right. They're bound together. And let's see what that does when I, um, you know, refresh my screen here. Does it do anything, right? So in the beginning, you see that from a styling perspective, no. But this belongs to this. That's what this is saying. These two elements are one. Okay. Let's, let's do more. We're going to go by to, to form binding later on. But I, I think best practice, use a label. And definitely bind it to the to the text uh, or the object that you want to add the label to. So if I go four, and then if I want to specify passwords, I can, it's going to come up password. It's just an attribute that specifies 
how my password binds to my input for my username and password. If you notice, there's two different uh, text boxes here, like I said last time. My type is text for the first one, which is just a username, and my type is password for the second one. And when, when we specify a type of password for a text box or input, it means that we want those dot dot dots to come up, right? So it's just to kind of uh, uh, obfuscate our password. We don't want that to come up, right? And the same thing goes for our uh, our type of submit button, submit button here, and it's not going anywhere with the post method. Okay, so let's see what this looks like when I have uh, these two things. If I re re kind of reset these, this whole thing again, no changes, right? Now so let's see if I click login, right? It says, hey, um, you're trying to take me back. Method not allowed. The page you're looking for cannot be displayed, and and I'll tell you why, because. Um, if you notice, my form element points to nothing. It points to this little thing right here, right? The hashtag. I say, go to the hashtag. Well, there is no hashtag. It's going to try. With my submit button, what it's going to try and do is submit this information, um, you know, to my, the, my index HTML itself or whatever with it, with addition of a hashtag. If I wanted to go to a specific page, right, let's go back here, I can indicate in my action, so my method is post, right? And my action is hashtag. That's not cool. Um, if I don't want it to go anywhere, I'm going to specify uh, the empty string. That's what I want to do. So let's try this now and see what happens. So I'm going to refresh, go back and refresh my form. And then when I press uh, login, it goes, hey, wait a minute. Um, the page you're trying cannot be displayed because an invalid HTTP verb is being used, right? And I'm using get or post, and I can't use an HTTP type verb with a uh, get or post because I'm trying to send information to an HTML page which cannot receive you know anything and I'm doing that because of this method right here if I was to take this method out taking the method out now and I want to go back kind of to refresh my, my page and then go back to this right? and if I press login right now take a look what it says this is what the post this is defaulted right it sends me, look on, the, on, the, on this page, index and question mark, username and password. So whatever I type in my username and password shows up on the top of my page here. Okay, let's try this out. Let's see what, what I do. So if I try it again, so if I put in my username is Tom and my password is 12345, right, as an example, and then I click login, well, it transmits my username and password. That's my, the default way of doing things, especially if I don't indicate where it's going. Let's go back. So again, I don't have any, any method, there's no post or get, and I'm specifying a form type of action, uh, of, of, uh, action as nothing. If I specify, um, a, you know, again, the hashtag, let me see what that does, and I refresh, right, and I put it in again, so Tom, and one, two, three, four, five, and log in, right? It gives me my username and password again, and plus it tries to take me to this page, which is a hashtag. That's what it's doing. The question mark be under, behind the index.html for username and password, right? The question mark um, is what it's doing is it's trying to, um, and by default it does this when you click a submit, it tries to send information from one form to the next. Not good, guys, not good. So typically we don't want to use a post, we want to use a get. So let's try this out. So let's go and we we'll say method equals to, and then these are the different methods, post, get, put, Let's try get and see what happens there. So I want to see what that does. And it doesn't take us anywhere. We have an actual method, refresh. And I'm going to go Tom and one, two, three, four, five. And then when I click login now, right? Well, that's not a great example. Let's try that again. Let's try launching it from scratch, just so you see what I'm talking about here. So you see that it's new, because it's remembering it's got cookies, right? So let's try this out. So I go Tom, and one, two, three, four, five, and then click login. And then if you notice, it still does this stuff, right? It doesn't matter what our method is, post or get, it tries to send this information to this page, right? So that's the, uh, that's the thing. We, we don't want this stuff to happen. And this the reason why it's firing at all, for all this information to fire whatsoever. By the way, it's taking both inputs because I have an ID of password and I have an ID of username, I can access these things. And later on, you will I'll be accessing them with simple uh, JavaScript one day. 
uh, you'll be uh, or some PHP on the on the back end to kind of say what's you know what what I want to do with this. It's almost like an uh, the ID works to be almost like a variable. So here's my variable uh, for this particular input. It's a username, and here's my variable for my for this input. This is a password. So these two things can be transmitted. Okay, so that's one thing. Um, and when I press when it, because I've made my input type submit, it actually does submit the form. Right? If you don't want your form to be submitted and you want to do something else then you can change this submit value to button, right? If I, choose, if I choose button instead of submit, now we have to program what that button does. Okay, so let's see what the difference is there. So again, I have a method of get, I have an action of so on, and when I go back to my form and I refresh my form and I put in some information, so Tom12345 and press login, and you can't tell because I'm not really submitting a new form. Let's try that again because I have my stuff in my URL already. Let's go to Tom, and one, two, three, four, five, and press login. Now my, my login is a button. Take a look, now it doesn't do anything. So I don't see any kind of information up here because my button's a button, not a submit type. Submit types, do that. If you wanna, if I click, if I make a button reset, a reset type, right? So here's my button, and here's my type input is reset, right? As an example, I could do that, right? Here's reset. And by the way, how come my buttons are one on top of the other? We'll take a look at that in a second. If I click reset, the default is to reset my form back to its original values. So that's a kind of an interesting and useful uh, button to include in your forms if you want the whole form to be reset back to its original values, the reset button. All right. Um, what it does, it does wipe away everything and there is no check unless you program that in JavaScript and one day you'll be doing that. There's no check to say, are you sure you want to reset your form? You just did all this work on the form. You entered all this information. Are you sure you want to reset? Because if you press my reset button, I'm going to wipe everything away, right? Sometimes the reset button is labeled cancel as well because we want to cancel uh, the form. Okay, so again, I've, I've got this uh, troubleshooting box here around, the, around this thing to show you how big the form container is right now because this is what it looks like when it's unstyled. Okay. Let's take a look at some of my CSS that I've used here on the back end to show you what I've done with label and input. So here's input. I've said all input items are display block, right? And um, that's bad, right? Because that means that this is, this is why I'm getting, um, if I use, I mean, this is okay for, for the beginning to start off, but it's bad in that <clears throat> if you look at my form, right, it makes that everything is kind of one on top of the other, right? And I can specify that for, by default, all input types are display block, right? Uh, but you know what? I want my username, which is a label, all my labels, I want those to be display inline. How do I do that? How do I specify in CSS that for username input, right, type is equal to label? How do I do that in CSS? Anyone know how to do that? It's a type specifier. It's a filter for the types. Because remember, this is the first time we're doing that because for forms with CSS, we have different types in our attribute. All right, we have different attributes. Type is an attribute, right? So if I want to target an attribute in my selector, in my CSS selector, the way to do that is to do this. So here's, for my default, all inputs, this is what this, this selector means in CSS, all input types, right, all of them, display block. But I don't want all of them to do that. I want the basic ones. By default, they're all uh, display block. But you know what? For types that are, I'm going to open up a bracket here. If I say type, and if I say equals to, and you see IntelliSense help me out, helps me out to do this. If I say my type is equal to label, so here's my, if I say my type is equal to label, because that's a, or sorry, my type is equal to um, button, right? Here's my type is equal to button. For all types that are equal to button, and all input types, right, that are equal to um, reset, as an example, and all input types, follow me here, right, that are equal to um, submit, right, those three types, because they're all buttons types, right, then I don't want my, my display to be inline, uh, or my display to be block, I want my display to be, um, um, let's say, inline. I can do that, watch what happens now. Now, it doesn't do what I want it to do, but you'll see, right, so let's take a look and see what that does. So refresh, and now if you notice, they're all on the same line, right? 
So log in and reset, but it didn't affect these ones, right? Because my text box is here, right? They're not inline anymore, right? They are, uh, they're blocked because I haven't specified them. They take on the default specification, which is right here. This is my target for my style. So for all input type boxes, display or block, but for these types, types that are buttons, resets, and submits, they're all inline. Okay, that's what this does. This is, that's how you do that. Now, there's another one. I want to specify labels. If I say, and again, I don't think I've specified any styling for label whatsoever. Let's just check to make sure. I, do, I did not. Um, I want to specify um, a label, right? Uh, here's label. And then for all labels, I want them to be uh, inline as well. So I want to say display, right, inline. So I don't want them to be display block. I want them to be display inline. Right? How does that affect everything? Let's take a look if that does anything at all. Refresh. Right? Well, yeah, that's that's fine. It does inline. And if this password wasn't linked to this uh, label right here, right? So I'm saying I'm targeting all labels. All labels are displayed inline. Right? How about this? All labels, right, are float left. Can I do that? And yes, you can. You can. They're all in individual items, right? All labels display float left. All right, let's see what happens now if I do that, right? So I can do that. That's for labels that display left, right? And let's say uh, the other things I want is for all labels, I want a little bit of padding around all labels. And I want a little bit of padding around all text boxes. I want a little bit of padding around basically all form elements. My, my form doesn't have any padding around it too. So just basic padding around all forms. I should have some basic styling. So then for me to hit target all forms, I got to put the form element in here. So I say form, right? And then I'm going to say, you know, padding um, as an example. And if I want to keep it um, the same as uh, everything else, so I say, let's say 10 pixels, right? Um, you know, I could put that in there. And you know what? I also want to put a margin, right, of 15 pixels. I want to float to the middle for 15 pixels and a zero, 15 pixels on the top and the bottom and zero left and right if I want to do that and see what that does for my object right and then click and click kind of gives me a little bit of spacing around my form right um, right so that's that's one thing that it does I could specify a width right now it has max width right because right now it's it's kind of floating inside of another element right and I don't have any specifier uh, for uh, my label. So I want, if I want to specify, well, you know what? All labels, and I, got, I already have a float left. I do that. But I want labels to have, um, you know, a basic styling of, you know, for around the label itself, there should be a little bit of padding. So let's go padding for my label um, of, let's say, five pixels all the way around. And maybe do the same thing for my inputs. All inputs, my padding. Um, and that's uh, every input now. My padding is five pixels. Now it's not going to override, be overwritten here. See my label, my these inputs are spec I specifically talk about these inputs. You know my button, my reset, and my submit. But because I've specified a padding um, attribute here, right? Uh, so padding is five pixels, right? Um, it's still in effect here for these buttons, resets, and submits, right? That's uh, one thing that's totally allowed to be to happen. Let's take a look. So when I go to, um, to here, to my form elements, and I refresh now, right? So actually, how about, how about we save the, uh, the, sh the sheet first and then reset? Refresh. Now, if you notice, there's a bit of padding, but it's, padding is all the way around. Padding is in here between our, uh, our object and other objects, right? That's what, you know, that's what this is doing, right? The other thing is that labels are label for username and password, if you notice, they're different lengths. And that's why you have this weird thing line up. Now, normally in the old way of doing things, right? In the old way of doing things, what we'd want to have here for our labels uh, for these for the separation here is um, almost like uh, we put it in a table, right? That's the old way of doing things. If you ever see a form inside of a table, you know it's old school. Like it's before CSS was really a big thing. And some older sites have that stuff. But we never, ever put a form in a table. The only thing we put in a table ever is tabular data. All right. So if I want to put data inside the table because I'm showing data, that's a good use for a table. We do not use table for aligning our objects. All right. That is poor form. It's not good for search engine optimization. It's not good in terms of semantic HTML for readability. It's not good for any of that stuff. So please never do that. 
don't use table. That's why it's bad to use expression web sometimes. Because what expression web does is when you start aligning stuff, it does inline styles if you drag and drop, which is not good uh, because it's page specific, uh, unless you otherwise specify so in expression web. I have to kind of qualify that. And it sometimes allows you to drag and drop for whatever reason. Sometimes drag and drop uh, puts uh, tables in place, which I don't, uh, I don't agree. So what I want to do here is I want to specify a width, a minimum width for our username and password to, to kind of style that out, right? So we're going to say, well, you know what? Our minimum width for our username and password or, or any label, any label at all, is X, whatever it's going to be, right? So that way they, even though um, our username and password are different lengths, they have a standard length here. Right, as an example for this particular form. So I know username is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters, and maybe a little dot, eight, um, as an example, right? So that's our username. If I specify my values in, set, in a set of characters, I can do that. In my mind, I'm thinking, um, think about how many M's, how many M's can that, that, that size be if I want to make it a specific number, especially if I want it to re resize in different ways, right? So if I say, right, for my label, my width, and again, I can say min width, which might be a, a nice way to doing this, doing this, or max width or whatever, but let's say just use width. So all the time, width is a number of M's, right? If I say, for example, uh, if I say 1M, that's pretty small. That'll cut off my label. Let's see how that looks. 1M. So this is 1M, right? See how it, it kind of almost takes like two characters, this 1M with a bit of spacing and stuff. And then the other characters are kind of inside of my other boxes, right? So we don't want, we don't want our, our things just to be 1M. Let's, I, I'm suspecting that it's going to be at least 5M, right, each. And when I say M's, they're the sizes of the widths of ever, an M, a standard M in our standard font. Right? That's what it is when I say M's. That's what the value means. Right? So if I say 5M's, right, our width is 5M's, let's see what that does for us. Right? So 5M's. See how nice and even that is now? So I'm specifying a width specifier, right? I'm saying width 5M's. But this is great for username and password, but what if my username and password are really long? Like, you know, or whatever. You know, I got to be really careful there. And I can also say minimum width. I could also use auto and so on. But uh, we have to define how I want my form to look. One thing I do know is that my login and reset buttons, if I'm going to have these things in my form, I want them to have the same length as well. And I probably want to get them to kind of be over here somewhere. Because usually a form doesn't have my login and reset buttons over here. They usually have them on the right side. Standard uh, you know, protocol, if you will. Right? So here's my username and password and login and so on. And you know what? Maybe I even want, just to be uh, sure, if you notice my username and password they're left justified. Sometimes forms are right justified. So we may want to send our text to the right, right? Text line right, so that way our colons are aligned. All right? That's another way to do that as well if you want to um, uh, change the way things look inside the form. So how do I do that? So I go back to this. And um, let's just say that our labels, right, are uh, text align right. Right, so that that does is it right justifies all my text, so it's on the right side. And let's take a look and see what that is. Right there it is. So that my text looks like it's the same. Right. Um, on the left hand side, it's not it's not going to be the same. And it depends on what, what what look and feel you want for your form. If you want username and password to be aligned left, or you want username and password to be aligned right, or you want it centered, uh, there's different ways of doing that. I'm going to take that off because um, that's not the effect I want. Right. Uh, but that's definitely something you can put in there. And if you want a certain length for all fields, like for example, let's say labels and uh, and so on, uh, and inputs, I want my minimum width to be a certain length. I could do that, right? So let's say, for example, you know what? I want my form width to be six, right? Six M's. And I want my display, uh, my input, all displays, including buttons, right? And you'll see what a high I can change this. So the default display is min width. I can use min width of 6m so that they're the same as my labels. Let's see what that does to my to my uh, forms here. Right, so it makes my buttons bigger. It makes my um, it, it can specify this is a little bit bigger. That's min width of all my labels, right? And my buttons, right? So that's what it does. Minimum width, so so that the buttons look identical, right? And you notice that the text is floating in the middle, right? Which is standard for buttons, right? Buttons look a little bigger and so on. The same thing goes with my my username and password. So that's my minimum width. I can specify by using a tag, 
if I want my username and password to look a little different, I could do that, right? Now, here's another problem I have with my, with my form elements, and this is for your assignment number four, right? So I'm helping you out here. Doesn't this look a little crammed, right? Yeah, it does. It looks a little crammed for these things, right? My username and my password and the entry boxes that are next to them and the login and reset buttons, they all look a little crammed, right? So how do I specify spacing between elements, right? Well, there's a couple ways. We could specify margin around everything, right? So I could do that. But that can get messy, and I told you about the box model and how I recommend not using margin unless you really, really have to. Um, not at least, especially since there's two different elements here. Even though they're bound together, right? We want to try and make these elements, um, as an example, uh, appear as one. So how do I do that? Well, the standard way to do to do that is to bind them together with some kind of uh, of um, container in our HTML, right? So again, I would do something like this. I would go uh, div as a, as, a, as a container tag, right? And what I want to do is want to take these, uh, the label and my, um, uh, my text box, and kind of put it inside the container tag. And I want to do the same thing for uh, my other uh, label and container tags. It's almost like a standard uh, thing that I'm doing here. Take a look here. So I'm going to grab this and put it in here. And, um, you know, maybe as an example, so this is div, div, div. These are all the div tags, as an example. And um, I'm gonna put one more because I want to put my, I want to partner my login button and my reset button on the same way, right? So here's my div tag, and let's say both these buttons, these are the buttons, right, that I'm kind of putting together here. I'll put those in there. All right, so I've got different um, divisions now for each of these things. Now, without doing anything right now, because I'm not targeting with CSS, they're invisible. So even if I refresh here, there's no difference, right? Now, we have to specify um, something that I want to do to each of these things. And each of these things almost represents um, a group, right? Now, I could call this form group, right? I'm making my own class up. Now, I would use a class and not an ID because now I'm affecting more than one uh, tag or control, right? So I'm going to say, so this is a form group. So I'm going to say class is equal to form uh, group, let's say form group. I could also, just to stick with what we were doing, um, I'm going to say form group, right? And I'm going to put this, I'm going to use this class form group from now on, on each of my divs that my that contain uh, form elements. So form group, form group, form group. Okay, why would I do that? Well, now I can target that stuff, right? So I go back to my CSS and I can go back to, I go all the, all the way to the bottom when I have some uh, stuff. I could Sometimes this is the other thing, when we format our CSS, here, look, I'm talking about forms here, inputs, labels, stuff. You know what, maybe I can make it so that I have all my forms. So form uh, styling. I have a little bit of uh, uh, comments here. So these are all my form styling, right? And um, so for my forms, and then, you know, I have my basic elements, so all what my forms would look like. But I also want to have a class of form group right, that I also want to style here, uh, which basically says a couple things. Now, my class, let's put in, um, just for, for troubleshooting, we'll put in another border with that's one pixel, uh, and we'll put it uh, uh, dashed, and we'll make it green, so you can see these things, okay? And I like, I like using Christmas colors sometimes, so that's just what I am, right? So my form group has these boxes aligned them, and what I want to do with this is I want to specify a couple of things. I want to specify the size of each of my form groups. So the minimum size of how big my, um, my div tag is going to be in height. I can say my min height or whatever I want to put it. Uh, or I can specify around my form group because my, my form group contains other objects. I can specify a padding, right, which is something that I can certainly do. So let's say my padding uh, all around of 15 pixels. Right. Let's see what that does now. So my form group. This is my class that I'm, I'm, I'm applying to all of my form items. And when I do that, and if I refresh, I get this. Right. So if you notice, my form now is floating. Right. So I've got my username and password. I think maybe 15 pixels might be a little too much separation uh, for these two things. Uh, but if you notice, it's 15 pixels all the way around. And and if you notice, but the green item is telling us where our our form group is hovering. And if you notice, form group is trying to fill in the entire space that our form itself has, right? I'm not using tables here, right? I'm using form groups, right? I made it in my own custom class. You can also call it form row, 
you know, call it something that makes sense, right? As you set up your form information. Now, if you notice here, right, my form column, I have like these two things. I have two objects that are between each other that are fairly close together because they're, I haven't really specified any kind of styling, right? I want to send the login and reset buttons over to the right side. They're going to pop over here right now because my form is so darn big. Right? Well, let's do that. Let's form, uh, specify that all type of buttons have, um, you know, uh, I want them to go to the right, right? So my form group, it's inside my form group, right? And I want my type, not my, now if you notice, this is my, I'm specifying my button, right? I want them, I want my, everything in my form group to be, if I want it to go right, right, I could specify that. But if I only want buttons in my form group to be right, I could create another class, right? And my other class could be uh, form group dash button or button, BTN, as an example. Let's do that. So let's say here's my form button, right? And my form button itself is going to have a, um, uh, you know, a right alignment somehow, right? Where I float, um, I float to the right. Let's take a look at that for a second. Here's my, let's see how that's going to conflict. So my display is in line for my buttons, right? In my, this is my regular form, but I'm going to make it float towards the right, right? So all items float to the right, only for my form buttons, not for all, my, all items in my form group. Now I got to apply this form button class uh, to my buttons. So let's go back to my HTML and here's my buttons, each of my buttons, right? And I could say something like this. I could say my input button is of type button and so on, blah, blah, blah. But I also want it to be, I want it to also have a class, right, of uh, form button, right, because that's the kind of uh, guy that I am. I want to have all my buttons flow to the right for the ones I specify, right? Okay, let's see how that works. I don't want, maybe I don't want all of them to be that way, right? So let's try that. Right, form to, to float to the right. Now what happens is with floats, if you notice, is that my, right away what's happened is this has worked, right? But you notice there's no separation here between the two. That's number one. And the other thing that you notice is that um, it's kind of broken the bounds of my container tag, which is my these div tags that are form groups. So maybe what I want to do, knowing that that, that, that happens, because that's what float does. Float breaks the bounds of your container. And again, there's different ways of doing that. But you could say specifically, if I go to my back to my CSS for my form group, I could say that my overflow, overflow for my form group, I'm just going to use auto again, um, is auto. Right. Well, let's go back to that form group and refresh and see that now that my form group is moved down, my box is down this way. And the reason why we want to do that is because we want to control the size of our, our form itself. Right. Our form contains elements. As an example, right now they're way pushed over here. And the other thing is, if you notice here, our form buttons, they're right next to each other. Right. Um, if I want to move, I want to style these buttons so that they're um, separated. I can do that now because I have another class that allows me to do so. Right. So not just for all buttons, but these specific buttons. Anything that anything I cap with a button, a form button class, I can bring up as um, I've got some separation between the two buttons. And this is where I could use something like margin. So I can say margin, some separating between the two buttons. And definitely left and right is what I want. But I don't want really any top and bottom margin. So I'm going to put zero. And then on the right and left, I want at least, let's say, 10 pixels of separation between the two. Okay, let's take a look and see what that looks like. So I've got a little bit of separation on the form. And if that's too much, you say, well, that, you know, that's neat, Tom, but 10, 10 pixel separation is a little bit too much. You know, how do I, how do I separate that a little lower? Um, and remember, I'm using pixels and M's and all kinds of, I'm mashing up every, all my, all my uh, kinds of uh, uh, my units. Uh, so let's say I want to make it so it's 1M. Now I'm going to be closer. I'm using, I'm using M's instead of, uh, um, and it's better from a, a resetting perspective, restyling or resizing. So refresh. 1M is pretty large, huh? Okay, but the great thing with M's, and this is something you can't do so much with pixels, is do this, right? And this is why I'm showing you M's, is let's say I want to go 0.5M, 0.5M, right? So if I say 0.5M is half the size of an M, Right, and I can do that by you know refreshing, and now you see it's much closer, much tighter, right, than it was before. And I can back go closer and closer to that. So I got a bit of 
separation here on the right hand side. This is my form right now. And you know what? I don't want my form to be so large. I don't want my form to be so large. So what do I do there in terms of my uh, my width? Right now, my width is not specified, right? If I say, uh, for example, from my entire form, that my width is auto, right? This is good and bad. Let's see what happens. If I go with auto, um, what that specifies is it'll try and wrap or shrink wrap on top of my elements. So let's try this out. So form auto, and now it's just whatever size it makes, it's gonna kind of specify how big it's gonna be, right? But what if I give it a maximum width? Like for example, I want my form itself to be at least the size of um, you know some groups. Now if you notice my my minimum width for my um, uh, for my objects right now in a single page form, and I've specified form itself, my specified my minimum width is six M's. I can have two of them next to each other, so that's twelve M's as an example in terms of total width, right? Um, and maybe I want something like you know 15 M's or something like that that my form will have the width of. So let's try that. So if I say my width of my form, I can do this, I can say 15 M's. This is one methodology. Some people do this for trying to specify this, the size of my form. And this is cool, but you see automatically that this is not big enough, right, for my form being 15 M's. So I can try and use a larger value like 20 M's, you know, or something like that until we get the right, uh, until we get the right uh, value, sometimes like a trial and error. Not bad. Still my username and password are hanging out separately. Don't want that to happen, so I'll keep going. 25 M's, right? Again, this is one way of doing it. That's better. So I got my form uh, right now looking the way I do, uh, right, and so on. Also, you know what, for labels, I think I want my labels all to be bold, right? Because I think it's important for them to look a little different than regular text, right? So I can do that too. I can go back here. And I can go my form, and all forms have, uh, you know, uh, font weight of bold, right? Here, my font weight of bold for all my form, all my, uh, sorry, that's wrong. <laughs> I wanted my labels, sorry, my labels to be a font weight of bold, not my uh, form elements. So here's my form itself, my labels, font weight of bold. And, um, you know, let's see how that looks now when I refresh, I get bold labels. So you see what I'm doing? I'm specifying, I'm trying, I'm targeting different pieces of my of my form to make it prettier. That's what I'm doing. And so, you know, you see that the reset and login buttons, um, they look nice, right? But now, let's say I want all button types, reset, button, and whatever, to have uh, different highlights and different, um, you know, gradients. I want them to have gradients. We talked about gradients a little bit at the beginning of this, and I have a great tool for that that I recommend you look at because gradients can be funky around different uh, types of uh, browsers, right? So let's take a look at that. So here I am. I'm uh, I'm on my. I'm going to give you some of these tools eventually. I'm going to go back down to CSS here. I've got my links, and I'll put I'll post these links later on. And I want to go to this first link, which looks to me like choose something. It says the CSS3 generator because you know what we're going to do this sometimes, and I can't remember every option. So I want to do something like, um, you know, as an example, uh, uh, some kind of box shadow or a text shadow or something like that that I just can't remember how to do. Or maybe I want to do a gradient. Well, gradient takes us to this other place, which is this specialized gradient generator, which is kind of cool, right? I love when people tell me during class. It's fantastic. Um, so here's my gradient generator, and this is what it looks like right now. If you notice, there's a bit of a gradient. And you know what? I want to accept this. I like this gradient. I like this blue for my buttons, right? So as opposed to uh, the way it is. And again, I can choose different blues. Uh, this one is called blue gloss default. If I want to choose another one, um, you know, any one of these ones here for my buttons, I can certainly try any one of these default buttons are really cool. Uh, the, for in terms of, sorry, different uh, gradients, I mean. But I, if I want, these are flats, and there's different kinds of gradient for uh, for the type of buttons, right? So I like this one. This is probably the button uh, style that I want. And take a look at the CSS that's go going over here. And again, I got this, to this with www.colorzilla.com forward slash gradient editor, right? And it gives me all the gradients that work across browser. Now, otherwise, I'd have to put in all these different types of, of gradients. And the other thing is I can say, well, if I want it to work for uh, EIE 9, I can certainly do that. If I want to add comments, I could add comments. If I want to get rid of comments, as an example, I don't have to have them. And then I can do just a simple copy here. This is a great little thing here. By the way, our color format right now, I'm using hex. I can also specify RGB, RGBA, HSL, HSLA for hue uh, uh, and saturation and so on. Um, I want to stick with hex because that's what I've been using so far. 
And again, I want to go copy. And once I've copied everything to clipboard, I can go simply go back here. And if I want to include all form buttons, this is my form buttons now, not all buttons, just my form buttons itself. Anything I tag with a form button to have a gradient, right, I can do that. So you just go here, and I'm going to control V for paste, and I've got all this lovely stuff now. And you're going to see how what this does to affect our button. Let's just go in here, right? And I got a filter. And all these ones work, if you notice, like, uh, oops, I messed this one up. Uh, all these ones work to say that my Moz, Mozilla, I'm targeting WebKit, I'm targeting uh, Opera, I'm targeting Microsoft. There's different targeting for, it's the same gradient, but I'm targeting different browsers, so the browser compatibility is much higher. Because I want my buttons to look the same across browser. Okay, so let's take a look and see what that does for my button. So I'm just going to kind of go back here and refresh, and now I have, my buttons are blue. Okay, my button's blue, but the text inside my button, right, is kind of this black, and that's not really visible. And I want to have a contrast from a design element perspective between my buttons, right, and, you know, my text and my buttons and my buttons themselves, right? And maybe also what I want to do is make my button text a little larger because, you know, right now it's um, around 1M, which is my standard size that I've assigned for my... Um, uh, Thing. So I want to make them a little larger, and I can do that by targeting my form button again. So I can go, here's my background. So before I do all that stuff, I can do stuff like this. I can say um, my button and my font uh, size for all buttons in my form, out, form in all form buttons, right, that I've specified. Um, my font size is 1.2 M's, as an example, made a little larger. And I can also say my font or my line height for my buttons, line height. This is for the text I'm targeting right now. My line height is 1.3 m's, a little bit more of, of spacing between uh, lines, if I want to specify line height. And I also want to specify uh, my font uh, color. So I can just say color, and maybe I want to make this white, because I think that's pretty good for my buttons. OK, let's take a look at that and see what effect that has on my styling of my buttons. Let's refresh. So there we go, reset and login buttons, much nicer uh, buttons. Uh, they've come up, they actually, it's adding a little bit of styling to my forms, um, you know, from uh, thing. And now, one thing I do want is if you want the buttons to have a little bit of, of shadow, I, uh, again, again, this is something we can do with CSS, and I'm going to go back to where I came from, which is my CSS3 generator, and if I want, not box shadow, but I want something like a border radius, and if I can't remember how to do a border radius, my buttons, because my buttons are kind of, um, you know, they're, they're very square, right? I, if I don't remember how to do this, I could certainly split in something like this. My top left is going to be five pixels, and my top right is five pixels, and my bottom right is five pixels, and my bottom left is five pixels. And if you notice, what, that, what happens is it creates my border radius, uh, and I can specify each unit, or I can specify just five pixels all, right, all the way around. So let's copy that. And once I do that, I can go back into my, again, I'm specifying buttons. So I'm going to go here to border radius for my buttons. And now I have two, uh, two compatible border radius, one for WebKit and the other one for all the other ones. But I know that they're all the same, so I don't have to use all this. I can just specify five pixels for my border radius. Make my button styling nicer. There we go. And my browser, my, uh, my uh, IIS. Express just crashed, which is totally fine. So let me just do that. And we'll rerun this thing and see what happens now with our buttons. So we, first we had our buttons are a little bit now rounded. See? A little bit nicer than what they were before. So they're not squarish as my buttons were before. They're kind of a rounded button. Okay, now you know what? I want to add in. You see where I'm going with this. I'm going further. I keep on I keep on trying to style more and more and more, right, as I go further. Um, and uh, I want to add in some um, some different things here. Like for example, let's say I want a box shadow, right? But I want an inset. I want an inset. Okay, good. And if you notice, I can specify a horizontal length and a vertical length and a blur radius and all this kind of stuff. And for this one, I'm not liking this tool so much because I don't get a preview of what it looks like. Like for example, if I put in a horizontal length, so five, and I put a vertical vertical length, and I'm just putting random values in here. I'm spread and my color type is RGBA or sorry, X, and I can specify a color by picking a color. Then finally it gives me this thing, what it looks like, but I don't see an example of what it looks like here. I do see it up here though. Take a look what I've see, I'm seeing here, right? So this is kind of a highlight 
and I'm picking a blue color, if I want a whiter color, as an example, my highlight would be white. And that's really, really what I want. I want a kind of a, a white inset that's about, instead of uh, five pixels, it's pretty darn big. Um, my horizontal length uh, and, and vertical length, um, as an example, is one thing. And my blur radius and my spread is, is, is also another thing. It's not really correct right, for me to have this box shadow. I definitely want to have an inset because I want to have it on the top left corner, but not all the way around. So how do I do that? And if you notice, by the way, my vertical length and horizontal length, they mean something. Um, you know, um, it, it talks to me about where, how my, my thing is going to look like. Okay. So I'm going to go out of here for a second, so I'm not going to use this thing. Um, and I want to show uh, my bookmarks bar just for a second here so I can go back. So I'm going to go back to, um, uh, when I go to some web tools, I have another CSS tool that I can show you. If it works, here's CSS3 Maker. Okay, this is another one. Now, there's pun tums in the out there right now. So, if you notice, this is border radius. I don't care about border radius. I want to talk about um, box shadow. And now, right now, if you notice, my box shadow looks like this. So, if I want all my all my um, buttons to have a shadow, this is what my box shadow is. This is what I wanted. I want kind of a preview of what it looks like. If I say inset, now this is where my inset's going to be. And I want it to be like a little highlight. That's what I want. So here's my shadow color, and I can choose here uh, top left, right? And I can make it whatever I want. I can even make it a gradient if I want to, if I, if I want to go crazy like that. Um, like, for example, if I, um, I can choose between two colors, right? So my first color is this, and then when I choose my second color, um, I can choose kind of a gradient color, right, for one to the other. I can make it so that it's this kind of thing. I also don't want to make it so thick. And now we can see what the, what the effects of horizontal length and vertical length do. So if I reduce my box shadow to a little bit here to the left, I can make it so that's quite uh, thin. And this is what two pixel looks like. Mm, that's not bad. So it gives me a little bit of this top left inset box color. And then I got these three things, right, that I can simply copy. So I'm just going to grab all these three things here, right? I'm going to copy these things, and I can go back into my CSS here. For I'm back. I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff with my with my buttons. I want them to look awesome. You know, just, I'm just playing with you guys, right? And uh, here's my WebKit uh, box shadow and my box col box color. And they're, these are all the same things, even though there's three of them. And there's these are all the same things, even though there's three of those or a bunch of those. But they just hit different browsers. Okay, so good. I've got my box shadow. What does my darn um, website look like now with that, right? And does it make a real big difference? And let me just re let me refresh refresh the page so you see what I'm talking about here, just so that you can see I'm not fooling with you. Right, so a bit of highlight on the box itself, and um, you know if you notice, I've got there's no rollover effects though because my rollover effects are gone, right? Because I've overridden them because I've created a box, I've given I've given them a uh, highlight, right? So this is bad. I want my over my uh, kind of my rollover, my hover effects to be there too. How do I create hover effects for an item, any element? How do I do that? Anybody? Hmm? Colon. colon hover. I use my pseudo class hover by using the colon separator to do that. So I'm going to hover over these things and give them a different look and feel. So I'm going to go back to my code again. And if you notice, right, I've got my border radius and everything else here and my filter for different things that it does. These are all good things. But what I want to do is say my form button is one thing, but I want to target with my form button hovers. Anything that's labeled form button that hovers. So I'm going to kind of copy this and go down here, create another little group. So form button with the pseudo class of hover. When I hover over my form button, right, then I want a different uh, gradient background and I want a different inset. I don't, maybe I want my inset to go away, right? Let's see what that happens, how that goes. So I'm gonna go back to my styling here, and I'm gonna go back to these uh, CSS3. Instead of my CSS3 maker, I wanna use my other web tool again. I like that web tool. So I'm gonna go back to CSS, to the first one, and let's go to that CSS3 gradient tool, which is Colorzilla, right? And if you notice, I've chosen, if you know, this is the color I chose before, this blue color, right? Well, the great thing is if you want to make it really a quick thing, right? I want to invert these colors, right? I, I can I can uh, do that. You can go here. 
um, by just, I can do two things. I can drag these bars around, right, to invert these things. I could do that, right? My orientation, I can choose from uh, vertical to horizontal, right, to diagonal. I can change the, uh, the way this thing goes here as well. But I can also click this reverse button. Take a look at this reverse button. Boom, right, so it kind of reverses what my button is going to look like, reverse, right? And I can also change my hue and saturation so that I desaturate them a little bit. So I kind of do one, uh, move them a little darker, you know, a little lighter. Uh, so maybe a little, just a little darker, right? So I make it a little darker, a little bit. I've inverted it. Now I've got different values here that I can use with a little slight changes to see if there's a bit of a difference. So I'm going to kind of go in here and copy. Um, and then I'm going to go back over here and paste, right? And now I've got... A different set of values than these ones. There's notice there are darker values when I hover over them, which is kind of what I wanted, right? If you want a lighter value, you can certainly de you can desaturate them a little bit more, make them a little bit lighter, right? But this tool here gives us a really quick way of doing colors for my my buttons. Okay, let's take a look and see what that does now from a ref, uh, you know, from this. So if I hover over them now, I get these buttons and they look really nice, right, compared to what they did before. So again, um, I want to pause it there for because we're kind of in the middle of our first hour, um, and the what we've covered so far is uh, hey, how do I uh, I can group form elements together with CSS? If you notice, I'm using everything we do to kind of highlight the effects you can have with CSS over and over again because CSS is the way that I want you to target and use your forms. So again, one thing I want to change before we stop uh, recording for this one is I want to take away some of these um, this troubleshooting stuff that I've got going on because it still doesn't look quite right with all my troubleshooting. And I got a border, the green border, I want to take that away. I just use that for troubleshooting, right? And I got the red border, red border that um, um, goes around the entire form. And if you notice, um, if I go down to footer or if I go to main content, um, you know, as an example, or main form, here's my main form. I've kind of targeted main form and I said, I want a border of, of red. I want to get rid of that for now. So now there's nothing in main form. I'll leave that alone there just because I want, if I want to add more stuff to, for troubleshooting, I can put that back. And now what my form will look like is this, right? So this is kind of neat, right? That I have, um, you know, this, this form um, that kind of looks like this. It looks like this is one form that's together, but sometimes what you want is kind of a light border that goes around everything, a real border not that just goes, you know, that the way um, it looks like this, right? So sometimes what I want to do is create a box shadow, but I want to make it light. And I want to make it so that it's something like that highlights as opposed to it being really heavy. So let's go back to uh, what we did before. Go back to my three uh, CSS uh, generator and I can check, click box shadow. Now again, this is not a great thing. And I can choose uh, inset or whatever. And I like to use my other bookmark for that. I'm showing you the bookmarks a couple times because I haven't put them up on my website, which I promise I will do at some point this week. Okay, but if I go back to box shadow, here's my border radius. And again, I can choose box shadow. And my box shadow is black. I don't want to do black exactly. I think that's kind of a, a little bit too dark for me. Um, but maybe what I want to do is kind of click, click, click this lighter gray color, right? So it's not quite black. I want to just choose the lighter gray. As we approach white, not quite white, because my background is white right now, I want to choose a little bit of a, of a color that's gray. And if you notice, the, the samples are right here on the side, right? So what I'm choosing, a little bit of a light gray color, right? Um, so that's something that I can, I can certainly choose as well, right? Okay, and now that I've done that, I can, I can certainly choose that color. So I'm going to kind of copy all that. And if I don't like how thick my box shadow is, I think that's a little bit too thick. I'm going to reduce that just to make it so that it's a line, right? Because all I want to have is a line. Now, I don't have a box, but I just want to give it some kind of glow like that. If you see, there's just a bit of a glow around this one side of my box, right? I don't have a box. I don't have a border. I don't have anything, right? But I'm going to put this in. So I'm going to copy this now, and I'm going to go back into my form here. And in my main form, I want to add in this box shadow, right? This box shadow which will give me a little bit of effect if you see what I'm talking about in a second. So the, these are what the colors are right now. Remember, I can always change these colors later on. It's easier to change than to add, right? Let's, let's go back here. And there's my box shadow. So I get a bit of a box shadow now. Um, it's hard for you guys to see here on the screen because, but it's actually there. If I, if I actually go in my form, it's a bit of, of uh, shading. If I want to make it a little darker so you guys can see it, um, and maybe a dark, uh, a, a line like this, as an example, I could certainly do that. 
by going back here and changing these colors. So let's say if I want to make these colors instead of uh, this light color, right? And I'll just use Microsoft colors for now. But let's make it this color, so a little bit darker. So you can see the box shadow. So now I'm going to just copy these, right, and put them here. So that way they're the same. All right, so that's it. So now if I go back to the form, they're going to be much darker, right? So there we go. We can probably see that. Yeah, you see that little line? That kind of shows me that my form, it's kind of an outline of my form. You do see a bit of color up here on, at least I do, uh, from this side. It gives me a little bit of, of border on the top and the, on, the, on the right. And I can do that by setting up a border, a light border or outline, right? Now, there's another option you can use. You can say my main form has uh, an outline. Right, so I can say outline. Outline is not a border necessarily. Um, and again, I could say um, where my outline is happening. My outline color and the outline of my entire box. What I really want is border. Border. And I want border top and left. So border top. This is where I use my top and left controls. And I want it one pixel and I want it solid. But I want it the same color as this one. So I'm going to kind of control V that color because I already have that color there. So here's my hashtag, right? And I want my border left to be the same. Well, I could type a separate property here like this, or I could go comma, but let's just do that. So border left, one pixel, solid. And again, I'll just do that uh, hashtag with another value, color value. All right, so to kind of create that illusion of a box, okay, let's see what that looks like now. If I go here, refresh. So kind of an illusion of a box, right? A little bit of a border, a little bit of highlight, and you've got a bit of a box, right? So there's my input box. So again, uh, just stopping for, for the kind of this part now, um, we want to be able to control our element size. And if you're not happy with the way things look, and I, you know what, I still think myself, I ain't happy with the way it looks myself. I like my text boxes, my input boxes to be even bigger, right? So I think I'd like these to stretch all the way here. How do I do that? I make them bigger. Right, if I want to, I can align my username and password are kind of, the letters here are kind of small. Maybe I want to make them for my username and password because they are control elements, not input elements like this. Right, these are my input elements. Um, I, could, I could make these things um, bigger as well. A different, I can style those two things as well by going to my label. And by the way, since I'm, I'm doing this whole style with my form, I might as well cut this out and go to my where I have my form stuff. And if you notice, I'm kind of this form styling section. And I've got my form button. And I might as well have my my label. And here's you know where I want to put my snippet, you know, for my form. And maybe you know put another little line that says, you know, uh, maybe a, a little bit of uh, of uh, of text that surrounds this stuff. You know, so I say this is where my form stuff is, all my forms. I'm just specifying a little bit of a break. It's going to be ignored in the browser, but just for me, for, for looking at it, it also appears here on the side, right? If I go back down here, if I, if I look at here, and I kind of click somewhere where I want to be, like down here, I notice that there's a line here, so I can go right to there. I know that's my form, where my form is for my outliner, right? So here's my form, uh, and my main form is, uh, you know, has got those things, but I want to change my label uh, also, not just to be uh, the size of my, uh, you know, to make, make them a little larger than, than what I did. So here's my float, and my font weight is bold, but you know what, I also want to put in my font, my font size. Maybe I want to make those 1.2 M's as well, right? Okay, and I also want to make it so that my um, line height, I always like to put line height in there, line height, my line height is always going to put 1.3 M's, you know, for my labels as well, so it gives me a little bit of size for my labels. And now, finally, let's see what I've got going on. A little bit bigger for my username and password. Um, I could, as you, as you notice, they match now. So these three, these these elements match, which gives me a little bit more um, shape. It gives me my a look and feel of more of a form. And let's stop recording now because I can keep going, and you know we don't want to do that.